So, Mondaire, uh, you uh, basically walked us through your uh, your experience, which, uh, frankly, it uh, took me um, uh, some time to uh, to to digest. Uh, incredibly impressive uh, record of activism and education and practice and simultaneously dealing with uh, the issues that I think are probably at the forefront of um, at least um, uh, somewhat in terms of, of your campaign. You talk about student debt um, and you talk about education reform that you've been involved in working for in, in, in uh, vetting federal judges during the Obama administration. Um, and so let me give me a sense of and, and we should remind people you're challenging a 30 uh, year veteran who's been in the House in, in New York's 17th district. And frankly, it seems like, you know, across the board, and I mean this, uh, no disrespect uh, to folks of my age uh, or older, uh, but the your generation, what it means to be a progressive today, what it means to come from a deep blue district in a deep blue state is fundamentally different than what it was 30 years ago, for better or for worse. That is the case. And there is an expectations. If you're not moving forward, then you're going backwards. It seems to me what what would be what would you look for as an incoming freshman? Like, what, give me your sense of how you see you would fit into a Congress. I mean, one of the things that we've seen with incoming freshmen in the last uh, 2018 uh, election was there um, there have been more, it seems to me, aggressiveness and caucusing by freshmen than we've seen in the past we it is it is critical uh and certainly possible for freshmen such as what i hope to be in congress to be the lead on so many of these issues student debt forgiveness for example is a top priority for me Uh, so is the green new deal We, we are faced with the existential crisis known as climate change and and the idea that uh, everyone in Congress, certainly every every Democrat, uh, ha- has not has not signed on to support that legislation by now, is unconscionable to me. Uh, we have to make radical action by over the next 12 to 15 years, and if not, it's going to be too late. I mean, we were, we've already seen so much of our in- infrastructure degraded. Uh, And and the things that we're talking about as part of the Green New Deal, uh, a a guaranteed green jobs program uh, with with training, trillions of dollars in training for folks who are going to be as part of a transition from a carbon economy to a post-carbon economy, um, so displaced, is these are things that we should be embracing. We should be embracing the idea that everybody would have a job that pays a living wage under a Green New Deal. We should embrace the idea that uh, we are going to shore up our infrastructure to withstand uh, dramatic weather conditions. And, and these are things that I care about because my generation, including myself, is in the process of inheriting a planet that's devastated by climate change. So um, the Green New Deal, obviously a uh, massive priority because of it, the, the existential threat to, to the country. I mean, talk to me about your feelings about Medicare for all, where uh, we've heard a lot of different uh, variations of uh, Medicare for all plan. Um, wh- give me a sense of, of what you think is the best case scenario from a policy standpoint and give me a sense of, of what you think the politics are behind this. You know, I've had so many conversations about this with people in my district, uh, including folks of my grandmother's generation, and people are concerned. People are concerned about what it means to lose your private insurance. Uh, here's, here's what I support. I support a system where folks get more coverage than what, than what they currently get, where the out-of-pocket costs of people who are part of this Medicare for All system are not going to increase, but rather will actually decrease. And a system where people will still get to keep their physicians and to go to any hospital or or medical provide you know medical uh, provider that they that they choose to go to. And th- those are those are my prerequisites for any program that I would vote for. And and that is shaping up to be a Medicare for all system, otherwise known as you know I, I think we can call it universal health care. Um, but these are things that people are concerned about, and I think they're going to be satisfied with the care that they receive under a Medicare for All system. And our challenge as Democrats 
is cutting through the noise not adopting Republican talking points about how uh, the, the, the elimination of private insurance is going to spell the end of the world, uh, which is simply not true. And I think there's a great disservice. I was watching the debates recently, like many other folks, and, and I was so disappointed in some of the comments that were made by uh, people who should know better, I think. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think the folks... Um... To the extent that people are worried about losing their private insurance, it's because um, they want to make sure that it's just they can go see their doctor. Uh, I don't think anybody is going to miss uh, dealing with the copays, dealing with the uh, filing stuff. Um, but, you know, uh, people are afraid of going from the frying pan into the fire. And um, uh, I think uh, there needs to be a lot of education about what 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 their options are. Give me a sense of what 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 else. I mean, so uh, Green New Deal, um, uh, single payer health care, or at least what you call universal health care. Um, where are you on student debt? I mean, uh, not asking uh, personally. You've uh, hopefully you've you've worked that off um, uh, through a legal career. But um, what what is your perspective on 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 uh, free college, debt-free college. Where where do you land on that spectrum? I am I am a huge supporter of the elimination of the 1.6 trillion dollars in student debt that young people and folks of, of of an older generation are still shouldering. You know the average the average debt load for someone leaving college, and as of 2016 at least, was 37 thousand dollars. It was more like 10 thousand dollars in the early 90s. And so we, my generation was sold this bill of goods that if we just went to college and worked hard, everything would just work out. And that's just not true. That's not true. And now we as a society owe it to folks with student debt uh, to, to eliminate that and to allow them to be uh, participating members of this economy. Imagine having $37,000 and then taking a job that pays you $40,000. I mean, what, what do you do in that situation? Well, you, you have to ask your parents, if you have them, to – to crash at their place, and then how do you build a family? It's just it's not good for our economy. It's not good for civil society, and and we need to address it with bold action. I think a student debt forgiveness program has to be paired with free tuition at public colleges and universities, and in addition to an investment in our trade schools uh, and in HB, HBCUs or historically black colleges and universities. Um. And uh, lastly, we just have about uh, a minute left here. Give me your sense of, like, what would you do in the education realm? You've worked in uh, education reform before. What do you think is the uh, primary uh, driver of some of the problems that we have in the context of education? You know, one one of the challenges is that so much of our education system is left up to the states and the local municipalities, as you know. Uh, If I'm in Congress, I'm going to fight for more aid to school districts like the East Ramapo Central School District, which is a school district that has experienced and the elimination of 509 teaching and other staff positions since the year 2009. Uh, We are are a very challenged district and uh, further compounding the inequality of of a system where uh, property taxes are are, are basically funding the the, the quality, you know, dictating the quality of the education system that you receive. 97% of the of the public school students in East Ramapo are students of color, black or brown students, and 80% of them are eligible for free or reduced lunch. So, so we, we need resources for the school district that, frankly, we have not received uh, both in the form of foundation aid from the state or in the form of federal aid to replace right. uh, these <clears throat> hundreds of staff positions that have been cut uh, from, frankly, someone who's been on the Appropriations Committee for the longest time. Mondaire Jones, tell us, uh, where can people get more information about your candidacy? You can go to mondaireforcongress.com, M-O-N-D-A-I-R-E, forcongress.com. And feel free to make a donation. I'm not taking corporate PAC money, unlike my opponent. And I need all the resources I can get to put together the strongest possible challenge. And I've got to say, I've been so encouraged to hear from folks at the grassroots level on up who are acknowledging that it is time for a change, that we have not been served well, especially in recent years. Uh, and, and, and you can have great respect for someone like I do and, and still come to the conclusion that it's time for to shake things up a bit. Mondaire Jones, thanks for your time today. Really appreciate it.